Emerson Palmer said Thursday the pelvic thrust that may lead to him being fined wasn't meant to taunt the Seahawks crowd late in a 39 to 32 victory on Sunday night. Palmer told ESPN it was a gesture directed at three of his friends who were sitting in the stands and the, uh, behind the Cardinals bench there and the gesture was caught by cameras during NBC's broadcast of the game and has gone viral. Skip. Yes. Sounds funny saying this, but should Palmer be fined for the pelvic thrust? Molly, yes, he should. <laughs> Stephen A., yes, he should. I know it seemed a little out of character for the Carson Palmer we know, at least from a distance, the, his public persona. And I understand that he said he was directing it at his three buddies in whatever, the fourth or fifth row. But it came across as being directed late in a big win at Seattle at the 12th man, as they call Seattle's crowd. And the conduct code prohibits any sexually suggestive gesture. And I think this would qualify this pelvic thrust as that. So just to keep it all straight, keep it on the up and up, no matter what he intended, it came across the wrong way, wrong place, wrong time, caught on camera, went viral. Yes, the NFL must step in and say, no, you cannot. You must be fined. Are Hello? you serious? Yeah. Extremely. You're serious? Yeah, I'm just going off the conduct code I here. Completely, <laughs> I completely and utterly disagree with you. Skip, I think that <sighs> modifications in rules and regulations, everything doesn't have to be hard and fast. You warn him, you make sure it doesn't happen again because that's how it can come across according to our rules. This man has no history of doing something like that. I mean, if, if, if three of his friends were in the stands and that's who he was talking to, you know, it's his fault that the cameras decided to follow him to the sidelines while he was talking to his friends or communicating with his friends. I'm just like, I mean, how many things can we come up with to take money out of dude's pockets? I mean, come on now. I'm not saying that, you know, I understand your point about it's the rule according to the letter of the law, but sometimes the letter of the law just ain't right. Just ain't right. And I think this is one of those situations. I mean, look, Carson Palmer, look, man, don't let that happen again, okay? Because this is how it look. May not, we, we buy your explanation. It's not intentional. But, I mean, my God, it's national news because a pelvic thrust, because he was talking to his boys verge of beating Seattle after dropping 39 points against the Legion of Boom and nobody can understand that? I, I mean, I, you, you, you got a point. You got me. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I don't want to look at you like you're totally ridiculous because you do have the rule supporting you. So I get that. But I'm like, my goodness, man, can, can, can for once we just sit there and say, okay, could you make sure you don't do that again? There's a hard rule okay. about communicating with the media and all of this other stuff. Marshawn Lynch gets fined $75,000. Then they turn around and they say, okay, we're going to rescind the fine. Just don't do what you did before again. Don't do that. All right? So how come the same can't happen for Carson Palmer? Okay, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm surprised you're saying it because you're the guy who always comes right back at me these quarterbacks get away with everything. They, they give them all a pass. And if I can go here, especially the white quarterbacks seem to get the, the lily white treatment from the league because they want to prop them up as the biggest stars. Give me an example. Okay, well, I don't give know me an, an example. example but this I, this okay, is okay, an okay. example. This is one where this it, it's like a throat slash. It falls into the same realm. You just can't do it. It's, it's just unbecoming of a pro football player. And, and again, it's not that the cameras today are following you to the sideline. They're all over this sideline. Nobody can get away with anything anymore on the sideline that is not caught on somebody's camera. I'm sorry. Any little thing Greg Hardy has done on the sideline, it's just like, it, it, it's viral like that. So I, I'm sorry he That's did fair. it. And, and, and again, it still comes across to me. I don't know if he's telling the truth about three buddies. But those are three pretty good tickets if you got them right behind the bench at he Seattle. He said their names. I know he said their names. <laughs> they were kind of silly names. He can get it. What's he that? Can get, Maybe he can, he can pull he can, that off. He can get, he can get those tickets. Right, he can well, get those well, tickets. He must have. But, but, okay. But, but, okay. Even well, if I buy his explanation, and I will. Okay. It looks like he's aiming it at the Seattle fans, and this is Carson Palmer. You can, he's, a, he's a franchise quarterback. He is leading the league in QBR, and a pelvic thrust appear, uh, appearing to be 
aimed at the Seattle crowd is way out of bounds. I'm sorry. The league has to say that's just wrong. No matter what your real intention was, it's it comes across. It's a bad look for the National Football League. From a PR standpoint, a pelvic thrust, I'm sorry, you just have to say no. You don't have to fine him $2 million, but just you have to send a message well, with a small fine. Well, Skip Bayless, I would tell you, first of all, that it ain't that bad. If it's that bad of a look for the NFL, clearly the producers of First Take don't care because they've showed it about 15 <laughs> times that's over the last point. three minutes. Yeah, okay. that's, okay. that's number yeah. one. That, 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 that's number one. Yeah. Number two, Skip Bayless, I would say this to you. When I go, you are right that I talk about the quarterbacks getting away with everything, mm -hmm. but I was alluding to defenders coming after them. You can't, you can't hit them too high. You can't hit them too low. You can't. That's what I was talking to. I wasn't. I certainly wasn't talking about gestures. And then when I think about it again, Skip, you're right in terms of the letter of the law. All I'm saying is modifications have been made for people who have been far more egregious, although they didn't follow the letter of the law, and the law was on the NFL side, and the NFL still made modifications. So how come that can't be the case for Carson Palmer in this equation? Again, I recognize the fact that it was a pelvic thrust. It's undeniable. I'm not trying to say that it wasn't, that he didn't do it. What I'm saying, it's a complete aberration and deviation from what his behavior is normally. Okay. And when you take that into a combined, right. combined with the fact that his friends were in the stands, combined with the fact that the NFL has let other people off when uh, letters to the law have been disavowed, I think you can make an exception in this case. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so if I flip it around and I ask you, what if Marshawn Lynch, I'm just pulling a name out of the hat, had been at Arizona and had given a pelvic thrust at the end of a big win by Seattle at Arizona to, to apparently to the fans, but he said, no, I had three of my boys in the stands. W what would the NFL do then? Would they come down harder on Marshawn? I think they would, and I think they should, because there's a track record okay. of egregious. And I won't say egregious, no, but there's not a egregious. track record of him uh, not egregious, but there's a track record of him ignoring the rules, bucking the system, and doing what he does. Your track record matters in life. Wow. You can go into court, I'm Skip, and you're the fact that this, you committed. Okay, okay I, I understand, but but what I'm saying is I'm, be, I'm being fair. I'm being consistent yes, with what I'm are. saying. All right, I'm saying that if you are a repeat offender of violations, that's entirely different than somebody who's a first-time offender in any walk of life. It does matter. Mm -hmm. It does matter. That's what I'm saying. The fine would be minimal by NFL standards. Yes. I want to make that clear, not for yes. the rest of us. It no. could be um, right. over 11,000 for unsportsmanlike conduct and or 8,000 plus for taunting. There we go. Let's talk about the game on the field. Okay, guys, the Bengals fell from the ranks of the unbeaten on Monday night, and things don't get any easier this weekend when, of course, they face the Cardinals. Stephen A., Bengals cards, who wins this one? Oh, this is a tough one. But because the Bengals just lost, and I think they're a big-time team, I definitely think they are capable of going to Arizona and winning this football game as opposed to losing a second game in a row. I think the game that Andy Dalton had last week, he's anxious to make amends for that. I think their defense can do some things. I think their defense can rival that of Arizona's. I also think that their offense with A.J. Green, with Sanu, with Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill and those boys, they can get some things done. And I think had they won last week and they were coming to Arizona undefeated, I would think differently, Skip. But because they're coming to Arizona fresh off of a loss that should not have occurred to the Houston Texans, combined with the fact that there's still some trepidation about the legitimacy of the Arizona Cardinals, according to you, I think this is the kind of game where Arizona, fresh off a Monday night game against Seattle, where everybody was hyped about it. You remember how you, often you allude to emotions running high, mm. and then you go down after that, having to lift yourself back up. I think those things in a game of like this ultimately works against Arizona. I think they lose this game. Obviously, the caveat is that Carson Palmer is going against his former former team. Yep. But remember, he wanted out of there. He did. It's not like they exiled yeah. him. He wanted out of there. Yeah. So if anybody's motivated, it's the Cincinnati Bengals to go against Carson Palmer I, I agree to with remind that. him of what he walked away from. Yeah.
He, so he didn't I just, just look at it that way. way. He sort of acted his way out, you know, like he just wouldn't That's right. play. That's right. So I'm not sure you're getting revenge for what? I think they owe you some. I payback. think it's the Bengals. It's not the way I, around. I agree. I'm saying okay. it's the Bengals that's going to win. All right. So yeah. you have shocked me again with your statement here because I fully expected, especially off our discussion yesterday, when you defended Arizona, when I was saying they're overrated if you're calling them the best team in the NFC right now, because I'm not sure. Right. Well, now I'm with you in your shocking prediction. I I'm going to go visiting team because the visiting team, the Bengals, have won all four of their road games. And Andy Dal Dalton, God bless him, this is a shocking number through his first five years. He's tied for the most road wins ever by a starting quarterback for his first five years. Wow. 23. And if he wins this game, he'll have the, the record. Well, that's unbelievable to me. So I'm with you. This team will be good enough and mad enough to get a little revenge here. I'm going to go 24-21 Cincinnati over an Arizona team I respect, but I'm not completely sold on just yet. I'm going to go 30 to 27 Cincinnati. Okay. All right, we're both going Bengals here. Up next, let's talk Seahawks, though. Offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel had some shade to throw at his quarterback, Russell Wilson. We'll tell you what he said after the break and break it down.